Jay Jay, what's up, man? <laughs> hey, how about that intro? That was great. <laughs> so, I. Uh, in fact, I'm very excited. I'm very excited <laughs> to be to be to be hanging with you today, man. I was looking forward to this. I, 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 I watched your set that you your your tape set. I kind of wanted to talk about that a tiny bit. Yeah. But uh, but for before I do that, before I ask you any questions, I want to make sure to let you know how safe and welcome and grateful I am that you've joined me for this for this conversation because dude honestly like i say this on every episode but it's it's very applicable to it all the the currency of your effort the currency of your time especially you a father a husband <laughs> you got you got you got so much other stuff to occupy your time and you've decided to spend the currency that you've got in moments on me is i'm so i'm man. so grateful for that absolutely thanks for having me yeah, man. Th thanks for thanks for uh, being being so uh, available to do it. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's really that's cool. Definitely, that's definitely my state. Move this. <laughs> so available. <laughs> so you you just moved back to Philadelphia from New York? Yeah, well, we're not. We don't really have ties to Philadelphia. Mm -hmm. We, uh, my wife's from Jersey, from Central Jersey, and mm -hmm. I'm from uh, Florida. Okay. So Philly was just. Uh, Sort of where we ended up. We're compromise. happy to be here. We love compromise. it. Compromise. Yeah. I mean, we were living in Brooklyn. We found out we were going to have a kid, and we're both um, very poor. Yeah, that Brooklyn's uh, expensive as hell. It's super expensive. And so we, we've been making the joke that we moved to South Brooklyn, which is <laughs> what we, we call Philadelphia. Uh -huh. um, it's very similar, but it's just we could afford to have a kid here. And we actually have another. We have our second kid on the way. Mm. <laughs> it's been crazy. Oh, man. Crazy wow. couple of wow. years. How old? How how old is your 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 firstborn? He's he'll turn uh, a year in August, so he's eleven months. About What's, to be, he's eleven months to, tomorrow. How's the how's the 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 evolving coming for the boy of, of of him? Yeah, he's, he's great, dude. He's really starting to come online. He uh, he's starting to have interests and likes and dislikes, and he's starting to have like things he enjoys doing and he's starting to try to he's starting to try to stand up and walk because before you know he's just you know this little guy that you hold around and walk around now he's starting to like starting to realize he has some say in his life which i don't completely love but it's uh, it's been fun to watch <laughs> yeah i mean you, know, you want to encourage him <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah don't, go, like, don't completely love that you've got a voice no. now, butthole. <laughs> yeah, exactly. He uh, he's had a couple times now where I'm, he's. I think he's realizing like, oh, I can like, you know, throw my weight around here and get my way. But he's a good guy. Yeah. Well, he, he you'd hope that you're making you're you're turning him into a good person. Yeah. Like yeah. that's that's your job. Sure. Yeah, no, I'm I'm very excited to be a father. I've never really wanted anything else other than just to play catch do with a child. Think, but but now that it's my child, it's like not creepy, you know. Do you think that now I don't I don't know. Do you do you have a podcast or anything? Do you do do you uh, do no. any creative endeavors like that? No. Uh not not podcast. Not not current. I mean over the years I've had do do you have you, projects, but nothing long term. Have, have you been getting up on stage anywhere? Um, I in I, no, not, not. I mean, I've been up in Philly. I've been at Helium. I've been at uh, Punchline, and then I'm starting to get booked on a couple bar shows. Mm -hmm. But I'm not like for the first time in you know a decade. I'm like not really like trying to get up. Oh it's yeah. Like, well, if you book me, I mean, I'm really happy. I mean, I still like doing stand up, but. I'm not gonna like go to a mic, you know. I don't have the yeah. time. Then something they'll be like, "Oh, you're here till eleven thirty at yeah. the early at the earliest. Yeah, if not exactly. if not till one or two o'clock in the morning." Uh, <laughs> it's not well, me anymore. I mean, I I just have stuff I'd rather be doing well, yeah, for yeah. once in my life. <laughs> well, you know, it's funny. I I said this about wrestling bookings for a while. Like, 
I, I mean, I still take wrestling bookings and stuff, but for a while, I kind of stopped taking wrestling bookings and I was doing a lot more comedy and I was not, I wasn't not wanting to do wrestling, but I yeah. would always, I would always say at rest, at wrestling shows that there was a certain amount of people who were at wrestling shows that needed to be there, who, needed, who needed to be booked. And oh. with me, and with me, the way I looked at it for myself, I'd be like, I'm over in real life. Yeah. <laughs> like, like, you know the word like you know Absolutely. the term over like uh, like uh over like a fart in church you know what <laughs> I mean? like but, but the opposite of oh, bad over it's yeah. the, the good over like people people i know like me people who i want to like me like me so i don't need to i don't need to fill this put on no. tight put put on tights and put on a show gimmick for you guys yeah like, for me to feel validated in in my value as a person. Yeah, I feel like there's a lot of crossover with stand up. I feel like so many people get happy and then they quit. Yeah, yeah you're 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 very, you're very right. Yeah, the, yeah, the uh, that's, that's like a lot of the um, what's the the old thing is um, it's like getting help for your problems. If you're, if you get the help, then you won't be funny anymore. Like that's yeah. kind of like some, sure. I heard, I heard like Pat Oswald just talking about that on a podcast. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It was like, uh, you know, you always think it like you gotta, you gotta keep your, your damage to keep your funny edge. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, I think a lot of famous comedians will tell you that's not true. Right. Right. And it, and I think it, I think it, I think it is true. I think they're just famous and people all love them and they don't really have to do good stand up anymore. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I hate to say that, but like, I think that's the case. Like, the people who are coming to see you are paying I'm specifically to, yes. they're going, you, you're the draw. You you're don't already, need to do much. Right. I mean, it's like, I, I don't want to take, I respect, you know, anyone who has a career in stand up. Uh huh earned your career in stand-up i don't okay. care if you're a tiktok i don't give a shit if you if people want to see you on stage that's a thing you cultivated like good for you you did yeah. that but like if you had to re-earn it mm -hmm. you couldn't you know yeah. what i mean no, you couldn't. you're not yeah, funny I, you're not you're 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 fine you do the thing you do now but like if you had to go back and 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 be happy and try and do you couldn't it's, and it's, so it's like it's, you can't it's, really it's, tell it's, people that it's a, it's like a flash in the pan. It's a like good caught yeah. you caught lightning in a bottle. Yeah. Uh, when yeah, are you do, when are you doing that again? Yeah, exactly, dude. It's like it's whatever. Uh, but it, it it is good. I want mental health to be you know more in the discussion of stand up because there is you know there is a huge pipeline of like depressive or alcohol abuse into stand up, mm -hmm. and you know if we could have a way of like at least addressing that, then that'd be great. But like to say like you don't need you do need it you do need a little bit of like being unsettled in your life and you need something else and you kind of or you need to be like creatively this is the thing i do and i put all my efforts in you you need you right. feel like a happy dude who just like goes on stage and is just like i love life everything's good and my life's great like whatever. you gotta you gotta, you gotta find the you gotta find the reasons for yeah. your defense mechanisms you gotta find yeah. the reasons for your 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 damage and make a make amends with it yeah like not not get rid of it completely because you can't you can't get rid of your damage but you got to understand sure. why it's there and how to cope besides in a negative way absolutely i think we got it all figured out Corey. <laughs> absolutely everybody everybody should be listening to yeah. us and That's only it. us and not pat oswald <laughs> what does he know <laughs> like, yeah no i think yeah. i think he's <laughs> It just is what it is, man. Stand up's a weird thing, and people approach it a million different ways. And for you to be like, "This is the way it should be done," you're like, "You're you're always wrong when you make that kind of statement about stand up." Well, Jake, that was a, the kind of where I wanted to get into with you, with your style of stand up. Sure. Do you do you like write out an entire set word for word what you're gonna say, or do you have bullet points and you like have a like a list? on um, a stool like like yeah what I, that's what i do like bullet points and a list on a stool yeah and, i have and, i have joke joke names mm -hmm. on a set list yeah. you know on a stool if if that's mm -hmm. if that's the 
what's on stage. Yeah, um, <laughs> yeah that's that's but yeah, but I'm that, not. That's that's what's that's going to be the norm now. Everyone's just going to call it that. Like, yeah. Oh, you got you you got jokes on a stool. Yeah, jokes that's on a stool. I used to carry um, when I first started. Um, I was like having to run so many shows because I started in Jacksonville and there wasn't much of a scene, mm-hmm. and so I would have to like do a lot of pop up shows. And I used to have a stool in my trunk. So I'd drive around in my car and I'd, I'd have a stool. So thinking that that was like a necessary thing to doing stand up. Like, but yeah, I got, did. I had a stool got, in my trunk and I'd take it out and put it wherever we were. <laughs> we could just do a show and it looked a little bit more official. Well, yeah, dude. Uh, I, I've, I've gotten booked places where they're like, they're like, there's the mic stand. There's where the stage is. And I'm like, where's the chair? Where's the stool? Yeah, you gotta have like, it got, other, it's gotta be up. weird when they don't have it. Yeah. It's, it's not like it's gotta, it's not that it's gotta be there, but no. it, it feels more like that's what this is. This is what we're doing. Yeah. Yeah. I don't, <laughs> I don't use it for much, but mm-hmm. if it wasn't there, it'd be like, you know, you don't know what you got till it's gone. Yeah. But I mean, that's that. what I, I do stand up is very much, um, you know, just a set list of joke names or even ideas, you know, if it's new, if it's a new thing, you know, that I don't really have like a joke for yet, you know, just a name. I've never really been someone who like writes out stuff word for word. I tried it when I was in, uh, when I was in Brooklyn, because the Brooklyn mics are, are, the mics in New York were much shorter than, Mm -hmm. you know, I've been used to because I was coming from Jacksonville and then Atlanta. Your, your, your own shows where you, yeah. you're the one who called yeah, how many exactly. minutes you actually have. Yeah. 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 So, I mean, like going from being like a road feature, you know, like a middle act doing, you know, 20, 25 minutes, then going to Brooklyn where you're doing like three, three yeah. maybe two minutes. Yeah, sometime, right. It's like, right. you're like, oh, I don't even know what to do here. You know, it's like I could do one bit that's very hard to get into, you know? And so it like, mm. When you're doing mics in New York, you really have to have like an order of business, or at least I did. That's kind of how I approached them. Right. I was like, I'm going to go do this. Um, but I very much like don't write stuff out. You know, if I do, it's like maybe an older bit that I'm like trying to like shake something loose in or trying to see like if I can make a new part of it funny. I don't, I don't know. But like, I don't really write stuff out. I try to like do something and then I kind of get an idea of how I do it each time. And then the more and more I do it, the more um, uniform it becomes. But like Mm -hmm. for years, it'll be like just this thing I talk about. And sometimes I'll hit the same notes back to back and I'm like, okay, I got a rhythm in this thing. But like, Mm -hmm. I don't, I don't really like to think that it's done. I don't really think to think anything I do is done. You know, like I have stuff on an album, but like, you there's can still, a lot of you, it that i still, you can still like, do it you can still do it and like like mix it up a yeah, little bit well, yeah. I, uh-huh. I, I put my album out in, in i recorded the set i rec- for my album was recorded in 2017 and it didn't come out until 2020 you know and so by the time it had come out the bit some of those bits had changed pretty drastically and mm-hmm. some of my you know friends had reached out like you the you didn't do this thing and this thing. i'm like well it's because it's, it's old you know it's not it's not <laughs> I had it in the can for so long. Yeah, it made me. It made me think of that uh, Mitch Hedberg thing. That um, it's like the um, he did the joke about the the ants. He's like, I did this joke on my first CD, but I added more to it, so I got to do it again. I love Mitch, dude. Mitch, <laughs> Mitch is like my favorite. He is definitely one of my favorite comedians. I mean, he's still like, I love Mitch. I love Mitch so much, but like, yeah. he was definitely really formative for me when I was yeah. starting out. I was so, definitely a one liner guy. All time yeah. favorite for sure. Oh, yeah. yeah. That's yeah. great. Yeah. yeah. He's, he's, I, he, I would probably, you know, it's sort of, yeah. I mean, I would probably say Mitch, Mitch Hedberg is my all time favorite comedian. He's my, one I enjoy the most, you know, like I, 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 I love it. And it was like, that's all I wanted to be. You know, when I started doing this was mm-hmm. just, and I think that's a lot of people, mm-hmm. um, you know, they wanted to be Mitch and that's, it's great. Yeah. He rules. I but, had a, I had an ant farm. Those fuckers didn't grow shit. <laughs> there it does. Yeah. <laughs> if I yeah. rip your legs off, you look like a little snowman. <laughs> Dude, he rules. Yeah. He rules. I love like one of my favorite things in the world is when you work with comics that are bold enough to have worked with Mitch and, and then just, they just tell you like personal story. And I like, 
over the years I've gotten a couple of those and I just like it just like makes me feel so in love with stand up to hear some of those things and it's like none of them are any like particularly any good you know it's just like one they time don't, they they don't, rec cocaine, and then they I, don't require do goodness it. yeah you know what i mean it's like that's not a good story but just right. to hear that he's like a real person right right he really right. was like he really i mean every comedian is sort of like johnny appleseed once they get to a certain level because it's right. like you look at like kyle canane or something like every time kyle canane pops in at a club it's like a big deal for that club you know they're like oh cool kyle's here and it's like Mitch was like that, you know, it was like he was doing the road a lot. You know, he didn't have to. He could have been a guy that would like hunker down in L.A. and been like an L.A. guy, but he wasn't. He was like going out a lot. So it's like mm -hmm. he has these stories from like all over the country. And it's just like that really appealed to me when I was starting out was like just being a little cowboy guy, you know, and just rolling into town, doing your shows and then leaving. And now it's like not so much. I don't I'm not really interested in that aspect of doing stand-up but i just really enjoy doing it and i i do like still identify very much as a stand-up you know like all my friends are stand-ups and when i think of myself and like what i do it's like i do stand-up even yeah. if it's how i make money i like yeah dude i i like the idea of having the goal of being a touring comedian like yeah. that's something i've always wanted to do like, right. yeah. i mean I've done the touring wrestler thing and I've beat my body up and took my clothes off and got punched a lot. Like I'd like to be able to go up and get crowd reactions yeah. with keeping my clothes on and just making people laugh. <laughs> yeah. That sounds a little better for your body. <laughs> yeah. But you made me think of when you said somebody like somebody was like, Oh yeah, Mitch offered me cocaine. And I said, yeah. no. And that's the end of the story. Pretty, that was pretty much the story. You know, it was like, it was basically just like, I uh, met Mitch, and that was the that was the only time I thought about doing cocaine. You know, that's the yeah. story. Yeah, I had a, I had a friend, like good enough. I had a friend who I don't even remember too much about him, but I remember him saying, "I'd never try heroin, but if Scott Weiland said do the heroin with me, I yeah. would do it." <laughs> sure. Yeah, yeah, stuff like that. You know, you're like, oh, well, right. <laughs> it's normal for for them. You know, and probably shouldn't. <laughs> probably shouldn't be like glorifying it, but like, just, yeah, it's like that's the type of circumstance where it's like, oh, no, I don't know what I would have done in that situation. Normalize doing life changing drugs with yeah. celebrities, right? Just on a whim, you know what I mean? Like not not making a commitment, just like, of course, <laughs> just like the ultimate peer pressure. I was I was at a I was at a, a club in Brooklyn, and somebody said somebody approached me at the urinal. And your story made me think of it. They, I was at the urinal, and they were at the urinal next to me. And they looked over at me, and they went, "Excuse me, do you have any cocaine by any chance?" <laughs> That's <laughs> very like, Brooklyn. Dude. I was like, I was like, by any chance? <laughs> by any chance? Yeah, Brooklyn was very much like Brooklyn bathrooms were. That was yeah. I mean. There, there were definitely like signs on doors that were like, "Please don't do cocaine in our bathroom." Like, not even like. Please don't lock the door. Just like, don't do cocaine, please. Mm -hmm. like, just yeah, just, like everyone knew what they were doing. Um, <laughs> they're definitely like Coke bars in Atlanta, or in uh, well, in Atlanta too, but in, <laughs> in, in Brooklyn. Uh, but yeah, it's like so obvious, you know, what's happening in some of those yeah. places. N never, never done it. Yeah, me neither. No, I feel like I, I used to think like, oh, maybe, maybe, but like I always thought like, it, you know, I think it would be something I really would have like not taken too well i probably would have been but the, then i think you, immediately <laughs> yeah you, you run the risk of uh fa like falling into the deep end of it and uh giving up your life as you know it yeah i'm also just like i don't know like i i don't really i've never really been a drinker and i've also like i've just always been poor and like it's such a like if it was like around, it's like okay, that's maybe one thing. But like if I had to have it in my life, I couldn't pay rent like immediately. Like it wasn't like I had no money, like no walking around. Money. <laughs> Where do these cokeheads get the funds? Yeah, I don't know. I mean, yeah, I, I don't. I have. I don't know what their situation is. But like I could, if I if I did cocaine in Brooklyn, I couldn't eat. You know what I mean? Like <laughs> like uh, like a, no a salad costs ten dollars. Yeah, it's yeah, it's so expensive. Like I don't know how people drink the way they do living in brooklyn on like a stand-up comedy budget like you're crazy <laughs> it's so expensive
I don't know how people do it, but they do, you know, and God so, bless them. <laughs> so what, what area in Philly are you in? Uh, we live in South Philly in uh, Point Breeze. Okay. We, right. we just moved here. We just like, we were living at my in-laws house when the kid mm-hmm. was first born and we were just trying to figure out, we almost moved to Alabama. We almost moved home back home to Florida. We almost moved like, back to New York, Jersey City. We were just like, and then Philly. We, my wife and I've always liked Philly, and I've been down here, you know, for shows and stuff. And I've mm-hmm. always liked it, you know, and I always liked the vibe. And it, it just really feels like a more accessible Brooklyn or New York, you know, like it doesn't it doesn't cost all the money to live here and work here and live well here. So we just picked Philly, and Do you we, know- we loved it. What I've noticed is the biggest difference between New York and Philadelphia is what's that? <laughs> the amount of misery in New York oh, is sure. so large. Oh sure, it's such a it, it yeah. probably has to do with the price of everything. But yeah. the amount the amount of people who are just walking around aimlessly miserable. Yeah, versus oh, like versus Philadelphia, it's like yeah, people 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 are upset. You can tell people are like in a yeah. rush, but they're not as quick to yeah. quick to like look like they're about to cry. Sure. No, dude, New York is like the cost of living is not a financial term in New York. There t- it takes a cost on you. Like mm-hmm. it, it is hard to be there. And you know, if you have, you know, if you have an, a, a, so much money, then like, yeah, you can live pretty well there, but like nobody does. And even the people who do have money, it's like wrapped up in things, you know? So it's like, if you live in Manhattan, and you own your house in Manhattan, it's like you might not have that much money, but you have a house that's worth $1.5 million. And so you're you're literally like on a – you're tethered to a place you don't really want to be, right, but because- all of your life is wrapped up here. And, you know, so it's like you really do have to like keep – New York doesn't give you a reason to be there. Like you have to have it. Because it, it, if you don't have it, it's the, one of the worst places in the world. <laughs> yeah, but it's like it's like, all right, now – Go go grocery shopping. Spend way more money than you can yeah. on groceries, only to like climb upstairs four times yeah. with all and your. Walk. Bags. I mean, yeah. most people you'd have to walk back from the grocery store. Like I, we just got a car um, <sighs> you know, this year. Like we were we were walking to the grocery store all the time. Yeah, dude. Walking back with all the bags, you know, like yeah, yeah, yeah. shaky so, arm. By the time you get in the door, you're like uh, you're like trying to get your feeling back in your yeah, yeah, in your arms. Right. <laughs> It was rough for sure, but it's like it's also like it, it, I I I really enjoyed it, and it was like weirdly like it's like weirdly minimalist in a way because it's like you don't have so many things, so like what you do have is what you need, you well, know. There's, there's gratitude in cool. in in, yeah. in the in in the idea of going like, well, I don't I don't have to focus on what I don't have. Let me focus yeah. on being grateful for the things that I do have. For sure, and. uh it's a it's a really good way to look at it, but yeah. But, I mean, it, but it, it you throw a, if it, you throw a kid into that situation, then you're an asshole. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, like, you, should, you're you, not, should, you know, you, you shouldn't have to have a kid in that in that. You know, making sacrifices for yourself is one thing, but like having a kid in New York just so you can be in New York is like, ugh, yeah, yeah. Uh, but it probably makes you appreciate not being in New York more. Absolutely. I mean, I, I haven't been back since we left. But I wonder how I'd, I don't know. I don't know what I'd do. I'll probably go back in a month. I haven't been. I haven't been back to any of the places that I've left since I left them. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Where'd What's you where, Where'd you come from? For uh, <laughs> well, you're, you're I was I was, at, I was at, I was at work just now, and I haven't I haven't gone back since there I left. You go. Yeah, you don't need to do that. <laughs> no, you know, but, people, no. You know those people you work with that like come in on their day off. What is What is with that? Who are these people? It's like, um, yeah, I would yeah, never do have that. You cemented, have you cemented to everybody here that you don't have a life outside I of here? No, it's so gross to be like when you, you're like you're in a you're in, you know, uh, a, a restaurant, or whatever, and you can tell like one of the, the workers comes in like just to eat. You're like, go somewhere else. What is <laughs> what are you doing? I get a discount here. No way. Like you you're don't you no one's paying you to be here. Don't be here. I just I never do that. Right. Yeah. Never. It's crazy to me when I think about that. 
Yeah. I'm gonna go see what my coworker. Just you're on. You're gonna go in on Thursday. Just go see them on Thursday. Can I? Can I volunteer for jury duty? Don't pay yeah, me. Exactly. Don't pay me. Ugh, I'm gross. just here for the environment. Yeah. Ugh. Yuck. Yuck. <laughs> Excuse me, teacher. You forgot to give us homework. <laughs> yeah, that's that is what it feels like. <laughs> I don't know. That's such a weird, such a weird circumstance. So, so in in the preparation for recording your album did you did you did you just record the audio or you recorded the whole like thing like a the, <laughs> the, the, the video too right uh, I, so what happened with my album was i did one thing so i i initially wanted to put out a, a set that ended up being not very good. I, I did a whole tour and I was like, look at my album recording. And it just wasn't a great turnout and wasn't a strong enough show. And I made the choice. I was like, I don't really want to put this out. And so I went back and I looked at a set that I had done when I was on tour in 2017 that I was, and I had been, you know, comparing things to, cause I was like this set, this is what I want it to sound like. This is what I want it to be and if it's not this good i don't want to put it out and then i was just kind of like during the pandemic i was like i'm just gonna put this out like because it's it's good it's like what i wanted the album to be and it's like yeah it's not some of the bits aren't they're not what i considered finish you know what they ended up being some of them are a little earlier than that but like they're good at at the present state they were recorded so then i just like felt good about it and everybody was you know scrambling to stay relevant during the pandemic and that was kind of my attempt at that to try and be like i gotta do something and, and it's uh, uh, you and know yeah, what I, really, I scrambled to get relevant i don't know if, <laughs> if it's even worked yeah that's what i mean like right, you, you, right. you know you do stand up like all the time and you, you know you feel like it's a part of you and then when when covid kind of took it away where like no one was doing stuff and it was just like, whoa, whoa, who am I? What is this? And then, but I, you know, had wanted to put out my album. So I just like went to work and did that. So it came out in the beginning of, or no, it came out in August uh, or no, October, 2020. So I had been stuck inside for months working on it. But it, yeah, no, I, I'm really proud of what it was, what it is. And um, are you still using those jokes? Like if you get up and do a set somewhere? Uh, yeah. Or did you like? Did yeah. you like burn that out? Like sometimes people will do an album and then start would, start from scratch. I would love to say I, I that was that was my intention, for sure. Mm -hmm. Was uh, cool because I had been doing some of those jokes for years, and I don't want to do them anymore. And a lot of them I have. I have. I have been like, okay, that's that's done. I don't really want to do this anymore. But then, like the my relationship to stand up is so um sporadic that like when i do do a set it sort of feels like i have stuff at stake and so like i probably will bring out jokes that i would consider like a jokes like like those like, are those are like gonna be guaranteed, guaranteed killers like you're gonna get it uh, <laughs> i guess yeah. you're gonna you're gonna get I mean, you're gonna get a good pop off of those they ones. give me the best chance to not bomb you know right. what i mean yeah. like mm -hmm. if you're not in if you're not in rhythm you know it's like if i was getting up a lot then like my set would probably look a lot different but since i'm not it's like oh you're just not jokes i've been doing for like eight years you know and trying, like, to, trying to knock the rust off yeah 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 and this mm -hmm. makes me feel com more comfortable and mm -hmm. i am doing like new stuff in the middle or or to, at the top but yeah i'm usually giving them something that i'm like well do you have something that's decent do you have like new material that that's about your fatherhood and all that stuff uh, nothing good i have stuff that i'm like i'm gonna go talk about my kid and then You're i'm working like it out? I, I sound like a crazy person right now <laughs> like i don't think i don't think uh i'm getting up enough to where I have developed material, but I have stuff that I like that I'm uh -huh. like, I'm optimistic about. And when I like, we'll start getting up more than, mm -hmm. um, cause it all happens so fast for me. Cause it's like, you had, you, you went, you, you take from the, I didn't even get to do really get to do my wife's pregnant jokes. You know, it's like mm -hmm. my wife's pregnant. Uh, I'm not getting up. Well, I have a kid. I'm not getting up. Cause how, how pregnant is she now? 
And now it's like she's back again and I can do those jokes that I wrote when she was pregnant that I didn't get to do. And so it's like I'm back to doing the stuff that I never even got to work out the first time. You know, that's the good part of having Irish twins, you know, it's like yeah. the material stays fresh. <laughs> but uh, just... yeah, it, it's been it's been so odd. You know, if, if you think about it like a process, it's like my process was completely uprooted because mm -hmm. I always had like new stuff I was working on and I always had you know what i considered like my set you know and it was it was set and now it's like every time i do a set it's like oh okay well i guess i'll i'll write a set list because i don't have any you know i don't really have anything i feel is in rhythm yeah sometimes sometimes like before like before getting up on stage i'll flip through my notebook and i'll like scribble down stuff sure on, on the on the page where the set was written to go oh i could throw that in there oh or, yeah that's do you feel like it gets thrown in? Because I feel like I do that every single time and I forget 100% of the time. I, I have forgotten. Not 100% of the oh, time. I'm, I'm so bad about it's, it. It's 50-50. I'll, 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 uh, I'll, I'll tell my wife. I'll be like, honey, I think I'm going to do I think I'm gonna do that snow cone bit. I think I'm going to do that new thing I was telling you about. And then like, I get up on stage. It's like the same three jokes she's heard for ever and ever. And she's like, well, you, you do all the same stuff. Like, I know. You kept it fresh. Yeah. She's a great, she's such a good um, partner. You know, is she, she is has, she, she a comic too? Does she, she, no, she, she was a comedy nerd. She, uh, okay. she went to school in, at Fordham in, uh -huh. in New York. And so she would like drag her roommates to go see uh, Eugene Merman do a set mm -hmm. or all these people that, you know, before they were like, you know, household names. Mm -hmm. uh, so she would just drag them out to all these different places um, to watch like that type of comedy. And so she's always, she's been going to comedy since before we met. And then she came to my show in Brooklyn, a uh, bar show I ran. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's how we met. And so it's like, we've never not gone to comedy together. And she's like, never, it's never, it's always been so fun. You know, it's like, I don't feel like I like when she's there because it's like, I can like bounce stuff off her, you know, and she's very funny, but like doesn't want to do stand up <laughs> at all. I, I think anytime I've ever, I've ever tried to bring someone I was dating around me doing stand up, I'd always be too sensitive to the fact that they'd like, like be like, oh well, maybe maybe try this, and I'm like, shut up, you don't know, you don't know what I'm doing, shut up. Yeah, for so, sure. It's an insecurity. I could totally, I could totally, yeah, I could totally be in those shoes for sure. I think <laughs> but, she met. I think she met me at a time when I was like, I, I was like done baking. You know, it's like I I knew my relationship to stand up. I didn't really like, like I like. The worst case scenario and best case scenario started to get pretty close. You know, it was like I, I knew I wasn't going to eat shit every time I stepped on stage. And I also knew I wasn't going to like have like an Eminem and eight mile moment where it was like, whoa, I'm really good at this. Like I knew what was going to happen when I went on stage most times, you know. So it wasn't like I didn't feel like having her there was like a liability to that. Mm -hmm. You know, I knew what I was going to do when I was going to do it. All right. This is this is work I've got to do with myself. I mean, how long have you been doing stand up? Uh Seriously, I think I I think I got serious about it probably 2018, maybe 2017, yeah. something something like that. But sure. uh, I I did my first my first open mics like and I was doing open mics all like from 2008 is when I started doing open mics and oh, then wow. and then uh you know, res wrestling schedule. I was like, sure. oh, I'm too, I'm too focused on this. So I would, I don't want to even say take breaks because I didn't consciously take breaks. I just, yeah, yeah, couldn't, yeah, yeah. I couldn't like sit in an open mic till one thirty in the morning. <laughs> yeah, no, that's no, yeah. <laughs> right. Philly seems to have an interesting, um, interesting dynamic. I was right. talking to my wife about how they. Do th you know, like I, I feel like a lot of parts of the country have booked mics and, mm -hmm. and, and you do have like these large sign up mics, mm -hmm. but I don't know. It seems like Philly has a lot of these, like the list drops, you sign up and mm -hmm. it's like, you're there for, and then they're not in order. So it's like, you're just kind of there. Well, it's also like, I don't understand. I, I just don't, I, I don't want to I, I don't, I, it works. 
So it's like, good, it works. You got it. It works. If but if it works good enough that it can that I can attack it with criticism, why do you need a four hour show? Why don't you just do a two hour show and then get the other people up? Sorry, hey, we got to make this kind of watchable. So only two hours of comedy. Right. Yeah. Right. It's 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 tough to space. it's tough. And I think I think this might be a Mike Kaplan bit when he's like, oh the he was like, comedy is the only thing where. If it's not funny, it's not what it's called. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's true. <laughs> so it's like, how many times? How many times do you like go to like a a showcase or an open mic, and you're like, man, half of this isn't even comedy. Yeah, yeah, just poetry. <laughs> what is going on? <laughs> uh, yeah, who knows? Yeah, absolutely. And I mean, it's like I, I don't, I don't know. I don't think there's any right way to do an open mic, but like, I don't know. It just seems like so foreboding to me when I'm like, oh, should I go get up? And it's like, no, I'm not gonna go sit, sit in something. But it, that's that's a really, I, 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 I think it works. I think it works for people that it needs to work for. If I, if I bring up this goal that I've got, and you're, you're, like, you, can, you can immediately meet it with, yeah, so does everybody else. I. I would like to. I would like to do stand up in front of people who are there to see me do stand up. Dude, dude, that was so me in New York. I got to the point where I was just like doing pizza shows and shows at a basement and just all this shit that wasn't stand up. And I was just like, God damn it! I just want to do stand up in front of people who know what it is and <laughs> see it. And everyone, and then you would get a little morsel. <laughs> and they'd be like, oh, why is he eating like that? You know what I mean? Like, you need it too much. <laughs> like, There's bitch up here trying to. Yeah, you're trying to, you're trying to like, you're trying to fucking like Eddie Murphy raw a show that's like does not warrant that level of effort because it's like the closest thing you've got to a show. But like, absolutely, dude. Like, that's, that's whatever. That's all everyone wants, you know? Yeah, if you're gonna do stand up, you want people who want to see stand up, you know. Well, I kind of, I kind of want to mix it, and and this is a weird thing because I'm such a comedy nerd, and I've been such a comedy nerd for so long that, like, of course, I want to do stand up comedy the way stand up comedy is done, but I also want to do like speaking engagements, and I want to do like live yeah. live versions of this podcast. Absolutely. But I wouldn't want to do that in a place where people thought they were coming to see something that wasn't what they came to see. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, because that that's the, the approach I, I've said it on here a million times, but the approach I give to, to every wrestling match that I have, where I always go, there's a good chance. Most of the people here or a good chunk of the people who are here to watch this show have never seen wrestling before. And they already have a preconceived idea of what this is going to be. And they go, all right, I'm not suspending my disbelief. This whole thing's bullshit. I don't like any of it. And like it's my my duty that I've that I've appointed to myself to go, all right, I'm gonna I'm gonna change some skeptics here. I'm gonna turn people around and then they're gonna be like the lasting thing that they'll have from the show is like, ah, that guy, that guy, that long haired yeah. guy, that long haired guy that had that was wearing the tights that said castle on his butt. Yeah, that sounds great. That sounds like a great approach. So I, I would kind of like to do that with comedy. So that's why I, that's why I say yeah. I want people to like show up knowing who right. they're seeing, and like yeah, absolutely. I mean, that's what the, the that's kind of close to the Kobe Kobe Bryant uh, mama mentality thing about like why he would play when he was injured, and because he was like, well, there's definitely people in the stands that paid to see me. You know, like mm -hmm. they could have traveled, they could have done whatever, but mm -hmm. like there's people who are here and need that. So I got to give them that every night. You well, know? Like that, I guess uh, Mick Foley had that same thing where he would like go out of out of his way to hurt himself in mm. matches because he's like, ah, oh, these people bought a ticket. These people bought yeah. a ticket. They got to. Uh, Absolutely. Are, are you a wrestling fan at all? Dude, I love the idea of wrestling. And I grew up like, um, you know, we watched uh, Monday Night Raw as a family and stuff, but it wasn't like something I sustained into my teens. Like I watched it maybe like, up until like middle school i would watch it um which has been like you know 
early, like around two thousands, mm-hmm. early two thousands. So like I was really into it there. So like my formative years, definitely watching a lot of wrestling. And then like when you move to Brooklyn, like everybody loves wrestling. My old roommate was like he had Japanese wrestling on all the time and was talking to me about these guys and these guys and all this stuff. So like I love the pageantry of it and I would definitely get into it, but I've never been to a live show. I, I think the the thing I say a lot and 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 you've probably heard it said a lot that wrestling and stand up are, are so much alike. Absolutely. Uh, yeah. The 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 thing that I'm in love with it is the craft of it. The same sure. way the same way you craft a set, the way you craft a joke is the same way you like craft a move set or the way that you'll that you'll take a take a an audience on a journey the same way you'll take an audience on a journey with a story. I don't do stories. I don't do stories on stage. I don't know if I've, I I don't know. I should, I've never tried it, but I don't know. I don't know if, if, uh, well, here's the thing. I would jump into a story and they'd be like, I'd be like, well, the year was 2007 and I was, I was all this way and I was thinking, and then the light goes on. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, you yeah, definitely got to get yeah, to a point yeah. where you, you got to be able to maximize you your minutes. Yeah, but you should do like a storytelling mic. They're cool. They're fun. Hmm. I used to do that, you know, every so often in Atlanta. I kind of got into the storytelling world in Atlanta. Um, lit, they had a a show called um, Write Club, and it was like they'd have stand ups, they'd have um, writers come like share you know, short works and it was really cool. And it was all themed around something, but you could like do stories. Um, so I was able to like craft some longer. Like, uh, this, this is not happening like that show. Yeah. Well, yeah. Stuff like that too. Um, these, yeah, yeah. But yeah, stuff like that. Yeah, absolutely. i definitely have stuff that I would love to do. I would love to record, but like, would never go on an album you know like i have some longer stories that i like telling but like aren't stand up i mean they're sort of stand up but it's like i'm not doing an hour long set you know what i mean mm-hmm. so it's like it's like a 20 minute story it's like it doesn't go anywhere right well the, the same thing and and going right back to how i started with it with the the currency of your effort the currency of your time like if I'm telling something that's not gonna hold your effort or your attention, or it's like I don't want to lose you, so I want to make Absolutely. sure because there's so much panic in the silence between the between the crowd reactions. There's so much sure. like I that that's built into me from wrestling. Uh, yeah, the 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 quiet between between the bumps. Yeah, uh, the 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 quiet between the pops, and uh, that. that like absolutely it's, man it's settling into that silence between jokes between uh a joke that's over and you're like oh shit is this one gonna bomb i hope yeah. this i hope this one gets over there's definitely you definitely have to have a little bit of it's like confidence arrogance you know mm-hmm. like you have to be you have to be calm enough to take a sip of water while a hundred people are, are watching you take a sip of water you know what i mean and i've never I've never felt comfortable doing that. <laughs> never, never once. And I think that's like, I think that would unlock a part of stand up for me where I could just be like, I've earned this. <laughs> but I've never done it. I've always like, like, I'm always trying to do it real quick. And like, it's just so stupid. But like, that's what I always do. <laughs> I never feel like I've earned a sip of water. And I feel like that's, a part of my relationship to stand up. I've never felt comfortable enough to sit down on a stool and I've never felt comfortable enough to just be like, mm. uh, I, I was trying to make it my gimmick where I would sit on the stool every time. Like I did uh, that. I did that for like, nice. I did that like for two months uh, in 2017. And I was like, ah, I'm a uh, braver man than me. I just can't do it. I'm I was, too anxious. I was like, uh, I don't. My body dysmorphia is too bad. I'm hoping. I'm thinking. <laughs> I'm thinking people are gonna go. Look at his rolls. Look at his jelly rolls. <laughs> while he's sitting there. Yeah, I just. I just don't. I don't know. I don't know. It seems so. I don't know. I don't know why I can't do it, but I can't do it. 
I can't, uh, I can't sit on the stage. I feel, I don't know. I feel too, I don't know. I, I can't, I'd have to like break that. I'd have to think, <laughs> sit in a dark room and figure out why I can't do that, but I could not sit on stage. So here's, here's what I'm thinking. Okay. So I started, I started jumping in my head about how neat it would be for your 11 month year old or 11 month old son yeah. to like come back and listen to this audio where you're like waiting for his sibling to be born and and really just talking about the the struggles of of life and trying sure. to figure it all out and that kind of being on the record and him being able to to listen back to that but also look it back to like at this point i i'm I'm not a I'm not a draw yet, and sure. you might not be a draw yet. But maybe no. maybe in some years we'll both become a draw, and we'll be able to sit on stage and record a podcast <laughs> live in front of an audience who paid to see it. Yeah, that sounds great. That sounds <laughs> wonderful. I mean, I hope. I hope. I don't. I don't know. That sounds. That sounds great. <laughs> so we're, we're making we're making the pact now that when when it comes to us being draws that we're gonna go ahead and record a live podcast in front Let's of people. It. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm down. Up. I'm down with that. I've I'm definitely, up. I've Damn. definitely, I've definitely sat on stage for like stuff like that, but right. I still do feel weird. Right. I yeah. still do feel like you know I, if I'm sitting and there's like something in front of me in an audience, it's like different. But when I'm just like doing stand up and i'm thinking i'm gonna sit down <laughs> like, i can't i cannot you're, do it you're expecting to, some boss to be like if there's time to win <laughs> there's time to clean yeah kind of yeah kind of it does sort of feel like a no shorts on stage thing it does sort of feel like if i sat on stage i'd have to answer to somebody afterwards why i did that and i'd be like i don't know <laughs> it's I don't like, know can, can i apologize ahead of time yeah yeah I, I, I do that a lot. My wife kind of reminds me of how much I apologize or acknowledge things on stage where I'm just right. like, you know, if I feel like a bit doesn't really have an ending or doesn't like wrap up, like if the biggest laugh isn't at the end of the bit, mm -hmm. I do like a really bad job being like, okay, that's over. You know uh, what I mean? So like, Instead so, of just being like, whatever, you guys laughed in the middle like, and then I had like, more to say. So you're like idea. tagging it with commentary. <laughs> yeah, well, there's part there's parts of some of my jokes where it's like, yeah, the biggest laugh is maybe, you know, at the 75, 80 percentile. And then it's like, yeah, I want to say something else. And it's funny, but it's maybe not as funny as that punchline. But I do want to say it. You know what I mean? And like the rhythm of it is would be totally fine. But then I call attention to it. And then so it's like, oh, what? OK, weird. <laughs> But I, but in my head, it's like co totally normal that I need to address that that it didn't end in a boom. That's I want to I want to give you the opportunity. I want to give you the platform. Uh, you you don't you don't know me. You've never watched my comedy. You've never watched my wrestling. You've you've maybe seen twenty minutes of a podcast I did, <laughs> and 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 this one, and but, this one, yeah. And, and I want to give you the opportunity. To ask me anything you want to ask me or say anything you want to say to me while we're on the record. Because this stuff, this stuff is outliving us, man. And I think it's really important for us to timestamp time stamp right here and right now. So uh, from, from the impression that you've got, any questions that you have or any uh, things that I'm you curious, I'm curious, you know, because it's like I've heard so many – I've heard, you know – so so many bad stand-up stories i went to a bar i got booked at a bar in but in the middle of nowhere i got there and it was bad and they threw bar and then i didn't get paid but like what's a what's a wrestling equivalent of that what's like a gig you've done where it was like just a hell nightmare uh. from beginning to end <laughs> or like something bad happened and then you had to deal with like what's the bad what is a bad night in that look like <laughs> this this is a ridiculous amount of them it's i'm sure i'm just so sure because i feel like these aren't you know they're not like union gigs <laughs> right you know I mean? yeah they're, they're, it, they're guys wanting to put it on it's and independent it in. con independent yeah. contractors yeah yeah and 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 the problem is always like very often that like you'll 
get told it's a charity show uh, like, after you've already performed. And they're like, oh, yeah, all the money is already going to the charity. Like, and then you're you're totally boned oh, out of the money. Sucks. But yeah. um, the one that is sticking out to my brain right now sure. is I went – I went to the show, and I, I can't even tell you the year. It's probably sure. 2000, 2008. Yeah, I don't have any details to my story. 2000, 2007. I'm going to guess 2007. Okay. Um, and I got booked in West Virginia. Sure. We, Wheeling, West Virginia. Wheel. And, okay. I don't know where and, that is. Uh, it was like a barn. There was a barn. It was a, a – it was – December. It was ridic Oof. ridiculously cold in this barn in Wheeling, West Virginia. Oh my god. And it was on <laughs> it was on a road called Cemetery Road. That was the road <laughs> that the barn was on in Wheeling, oh, West no. Virginia. Like cornfields. We were just on cornfields. Like there's absolutely no way this place could be a venue for people. Yeah people to show up to we're like sure. we're we're driving and this was like we had map quest at the time we were just yeah, uh, following yeah following that was the, such a bad time following the directions on the map quest and we're out like, map quest we're like what the hell where are we yeah. and and i had i had the text um the text messages my tone for the text messages was the uh the uh friday the 13th theme oh uh, god <laughs> <laughs> so as we like turn like, the, the 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 map quest says graveyard road and then we look up graveyard road there it is <laughs> like my phone went off and somebody was texting me at that very moment oh boy so we get to the show we get to the show let's say uh, go ahead and say the show yeah the fans are bundled up and they all have like gloves on oh, and, like, God. and hoods and this this barn is there's stacks of hay all over the place <laughs> um and and there's like you know those like heaters that look like jet engines yeah yeah like a propane all, that's all they had for this God. big barn and and like there was wrestlers who went out there and wrestled shirtless oh it was God. freezing cold i i was like uh Give me my hoodie. I'll go wrestle in my hoodie. Like <laughs> I, I'm not doing this. It's freezing cold. Like, yeah. I went out there and I wrestled in a barn, <laughs> in a hoodie, on Graveyard Road. Oh my gosh. With a with a propane jet engine heater, and yeah. I think I also probably didn't get paid for that. <laughs> <laughs> That's the best part. You're like you do so much labor, and then you're just like, yeah, I lost money. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like all every, those bad games. All of it, all of it has has. Okay, uh, let's say I started wrestling in 2002. Like, so I well, I started wrestling in 2001. That was when I started training, and I started wrestling as Corey Castle. I adapted that name in 2002. So. From then, what was that 19 years now I've been doing? Um, I've been paying to play this entire time. I've yeah, never made a God. living off of it. Uh, yeah, it's, so. it's, re it's really like, all right, well, I'm going to drive. I'm going to drive the whole day and I'll use the whole entire day to, 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 to sh any, I could be doing anything else and getting paid yeah. for it, but right. like, I'm such a mark for this sport. I'm such a mark. <laughs> I'm such yeah. a mark for myself that like I've gotta I've gotta go make this town and I've gotta go I gotta go put my body through that shit and I gotta yeah. go hurt myself and get applause for for twenty dollars? Holy it's twenty uh, bucks it's like the same as comedy. Yeah, but, it, but, but I hurt myself a lot more. Wow. And I have That's crazy. And and it's like, oh okay, well, Oh, where well, they go? Hey, well, what's your what's your rate? And you tell them what you want, and they go, Oh, why would I give you that when this guy drives from Buffalo and he does it for twenty dollars? Oh and it's like, oh, well, okay, so if I want to work at all, I gotta do it for like nothing because other people who are 
fucking it up for the rest of us. Jeez. Why don't those guys get like kind of ousted? Why don't they? Why don't they go get effed? I have no idea. But yeah, it seems like every time, every time that people start the idea of like a comedy union, it's like it falls apart because those people are always going to exist. The people because are like, I'll do the, it for twenty. I'll do it free. Can I do it? Right. Yeah. Like, it's, it falls apart. It's it's promoters and um, and it's like people who were in the business. I would have to give it a little quote, uh, a little quotes on that, sure. but uh, they're they're exploiting, they're exploiting us. Oh, absolutely! They're exploiting the dreamers. We're the dreamers who sell the dreams to other dreamers, but we don't. That those dreamers don't understand th- because it looks like show business that yeah. we're getting. Like they're like, oh, this guy's on a show. He's probably rich and famous. Like <laughs> I'll go up and I'll take pictures with you and I'll sign autographs and stuff. But I'm like, all right. Bye. I'm gonna go lose money on driving home. Yeah. If I want to, if I want to fill my gas, if I want to eat Ugh. something, I'm fucked. Yeah. Yeah. No, so, I was definitely all of my twenties <laughs> doing shit like this. Yeah. I mean, it's all of my twenties and all of my thirties <laughs> been well. Some of my teens. <laughs> Sheesh. Yeah. yeah I, it's fun though. Yeah, yeah, totally. <laughs> what else would you rather be doing? <laughs> right. You know what I mean? I wouldn't trade it, but well, like no, I, you know, I, now that I'm where I am, it seems really silly. Well, yeah, I mean I'm not I would not take it back. I would not sure. I would not change anything about it because man, I really like who I've become because of that struggle. I yeah. really like the the humility that I've got based <laughs> off based off of Based off of some of that, like you ain't shit stuff. Oh yeah, because you—it's so obvious that you ain't shit. Like, mm-hmm. and then the moments where you're like, you do feel like, hey, I'm pretty—I feel pretty good. It's like you kind of earned that. You know what I mean? Right, and it right. feels great. Definitely, um, definitely. I, I love, I love the experience. I've been able to travel so much because of comedy, and mm-hmm. that's something I never would have did. I mean, I always approach everything I do with the uh, the mindset that, like, I re I was one life decision away from like never leaving my hometown you know and and, like managing a blockbuster and then the blockbuster closes and then that's that was my life Mm. and like i decided to do stand-up really like set me on a path that i'm really happy about well there's entertainment involved with both things yeah absolutely but that's working at Blockbuster is being in the entertainment business. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't even think I would have got that job. <laughs> that's like what? What are you a manager? West Coast <laughs> West Coast Video. Yeah, yeah. I don't even know. I mean, I, I don't know what the equivalent would have been, but I'd have been stuck in Jacksonville doing some some weird shit. So, um, I have just a couple other things. And I'll send you off into the sunset. You can get a hot dog and a handshake and, and go ahead and live the rest of your night. But <laughs> <laughs> uh, so this is a, it's a weird it's a weird topic to bring up. But anybody who is gets into the entertainment business, anybody who holds a microphone and says the words that I'm going to say are more important than the words that you're going to say. So you're going to listen to this rhetorical conversation. Like you, you don't have any, you can't say anything back to me. That that's like some sort of ego hole that was, that was caused by some major damage. What would you say your major damage was? Um, I think that I, gravitated towards stand-up because it felt clever and i love i loved watching uh comedy central half hours because that was like what i loved comedy central presents when i was a kid Mm -hmm. and i loved bits not even necessarily jokes like i wasn't like a you know street joke guy but when someone said something and i was like oh damn that's so clever uh, it like yeah. really felt like it had value to so me. like really yes a, yes yes ending somebody yeah well just like <laughs> i don't know just a real turn of phrase or like a just mm-hmm. a thing you know like when i thought about um some of the comics back then they were just like bits that were just like wow that's just so funny that like little idea is so funny and it had so much value and i just wanted to be the person 
that could create those things. It was never really about me. I didn't really need my personality to, to be like important. I didn't really need my voice to be like over somebody. It was just like, hey, I'm gonna here's these things I want to say, and I really hope these have value. I really hope these are cool things, and I really hope they're good bits. And it's, for me, that's always been my approach to stand up, and I feel like it's filling a void of like that everyone feel like because everyone talks about you either at a you either have a dead parent or you had an overdoting parent or you had an abusive parent and it's like i definitely had my parents were separated my dad's an alcoholic so it's like i definitely didn't feel like enough validation and so it's like i definitely fit the mold of that kind of stand up where it's like i'm just trying to prove it to my dad but like i didn't have that i didn't need you to like me that did, was a byproduct did someone in your life try to te treat you like you weren't smart did that happen? Yeah, I mean, my dad didn't make me feel the way I sh my dad wasn't abusive, but my dad was neglectful. I mm -hmm. would say like I'm not like I don't have I don't have a sad story. My dad just drank a lot, you know what I mean? Like he's not he didn't hit us. <laughs> he just drank a lot and he that's he was just a kind of a, he's just kind of a sad guy and it's like mm -hmm. he definitely didn't make you feel as special as you need to feel as a child. And so I think I saw I sought that out later down the line because i think i was pretty depressed for most of my teens and i didn't even know that was a thing i did i just thought that was life you know like i saw <laughs> office space and i was like way too like oh yeah i'm gonna be just like that i'm gonna be jaded and like little sh have a <laughs> shitty attitude and i'm so <laughs> over this shit i haven't even done yet that was like my mindset and then i started doing stand-up and i was like oh this is like an outlet like i can feel good in new ways doing this and i could feel terrible in new ways but like i can feel in new ways and it was just like definitely filling a void there you know what were, i mean were you also like a a basketball player or were you just a big basketball fan um i played basketball up until high school and i felt like i i felt like it was like okay this is the time where it becomes serious and i always liked i always just liked I like the, the, I, I didn't feel like I could do that. I, mm -hmm. in retrospect, I absolutely could have played like basketball in high school. Like I would have been fine. Mm -hmm. Um, but I just didn't, I didn't have that guidance. I didn't have that motivation. Like my parents weren't like, you should do this because of this, you know, like I didn't know when I graduated, it was like, I don't even know. Am I going to go to college? Like I had no guidance. And so stand up was like one of the first things where it's like, a path unfolded for me and I was like, I'm going to follow this. Like this it looks, this is for me. And I never felt like that in any other things. Cause I love sports growing up, but I was always uh, underweight mm -hmm. and I didn't feel like I had the, I don't know. I didn't feel, I didn't like practice. I don't like, I didn't like run. I mean, I, I could do all the stuff, but like, I didn't like running. I didn't like, doing that aspect of it like the boot camp mm -hmm. conditioning stuff yeah and i was kind of lazy because yeah. i didn't have motivation i didn't have any guidance and i didn't have the carrot wasn't identified to me you know what i mean mm -hmm. like it's like and i feel like if i had that then i maybe would have been a little more i don't know active <laughs> but i definitely love basketball i mean i'm i got into it more when i moved to new york because it's so mm -hmm. available Okay. So I play all the time. Okay. Two more quick things. There's a segment I always do mm -hmm. on here where I call it audio time travel. So let me go right back to what I what I said about this 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 timestamp on right now, right? So this timestamp on right now is you have an eleven month uh, eleven month old son, and you have one on the way. Mm -hmm. He's Irish twins, and. <laughs> And in 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 20 years, let's say they stumble across this audio, right? They stumble across this video. They stumble across this episode, and they want to get a glimpse into who their father was in the year 2021. 
and and the messages that they can take away because who knows if we'll be here who knows if either one of us will be here who knows if you'll you'll be around (laughs) so so like this could be a very touching moment for them to have like a special message directly to them from the 2021 version of their dad so in the next in the next minute or so or however long you want to give this message you're speaking directly to the 20 <laughs> years from now version of your kids. What are you oh telling them? This is so intense. I, I, if I'm just being honest with myself, I mean, I have nothing. If I'm speaking directly to my kids, uh, I have nothing figured out right now. <laughs> That's nothing figured out for you right now. Whatever happens, we did. We pulled it off. That was not planned. We nailed it, hopefully. We, the only thing we know is that my wife and I love you both very much. And we want nothing but the best from you, for, for you, from you. We don't give a shit. You can be a little dirtbag, so I don't care. We just want to give you the best. And then whatever you do with the best, I don't care. <laughs> Uh, I hope you're thriving. I hope you're good people. But I will love you regardless. I really will. Um, yeah, I don't know. I don't want to get emotional. <laughs> no, d- d- you're safe. You're safe. You're welcome to. I mean, that's get, that's that's what I that's what I would want to say and what I want to hear because there's nothing there's nothing I need to say. Other than that, I mean, I'm really trying right now to try and get my life in order, in yeah. order to provide to become the person I want to be for them. You know what I mean? Well, like I'm I think, to get my, I think my it's stuff straight. it's uh, an effort to break a chain, right? So you've come from a broken home. Uh, you, 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 <laughs> I wouldn't you, call it a broken home, but yeah, no, but I mean, I mean like I, your, I your your parents. You said your parents broke up. Yeah, and yeah. Your dad, your dad was. Yeah, it was not ideal. Sure. Uh, so you, you know, your effort to want to be an ideal parent. Oh yeah, uh, I, I, I can relate to what you're saying to them, hundred percent. Yeah, like, I mean, that's all I want to do is just like my dad. My dad's dad was a piece of shit. Mm-hmm. So he, you know, he sort of like he covered ground. I'm not saying my dad didn't do a good job. He did a good job. Mm-hmm. He did the absolute best of his abilities. Mm-hmm. Like he's not a bad guy. He did a good job, mm-hmm. but I just want to do a better job. And that's all he would want. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Like he doesn't, he's not going to, like that's all he would want for me. And that's all I want for them. You know, that's all you want to do. You just want to make your parents look like shit. <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> but in the, in the best, I mean that in the best possible way, but yeah, I'm going to like, I'm going to make him look like a piece of shit. I'm going to be the best dad ever. <laughs> he's going to be like, what, 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 what? Do-? Yeah. I just call him out. <laughs> But I smell like shit now. What <laughs> Why do I smell like shit? <laughs> yeah. Well, my dad's extremely retired, so he probably does smell like shit right now. <laughs> very, very, very retired people smell like, he like, is. like just like balls. Yeah, he is the most retired I've ever seen a man. He was, he was already living in Florida, so it's not like he had to go anywhere. He was just like, I'm, he just like flipped a sign. He's like, I'm retired now. Pre, pre-retired in Florida. Yeah, he was already retired and now he's like officially retired. So but, the way, the way I wrap up every episode of the show is, uh, I, I hypothetically gift you the show. What? So this is, this is hypothetically your first <laughs> episode of your new show. Oh, of how about that? Jake had, and in a very Jerry Springer's final thought type of way, if you could wrap up the show and give the lessons for the takeaways and, <laughs> and give some sort of inspiration for how is that what be- Springer did? I don't remember that. He really yeah. like wrapped it up. Yeah, every I guess time he did. That's funny. And, and, so it, the it would be it would say at the bottom I of the screen. I used to watch that. Every Jer- it would say Jerry Jerry's final thoughts at the bottom. Jerry Springer's final thoughts at the bottom, the bottom left of the screen. <laughs> so, in your uh, in your very best, Jerry Springer's final thoughts. Uh, how do you take away uh, what lessons we can learn to to inspire us to be better versions of ourselves? 
Well, folks, thanks for tuning in. <laughs> I think what you could take away from this is that you don't need to be somebody else. You just need to figure out yourself and what you want and then try and figure out a path to get there. And if it means going to <laughs> Wheeling, West, what was it? Wheeling, Wheeling, uh, West Virginia? Yeah. You got to go to Wheeling, baby. You got to gotta wrestle in the hay, bro. You got to get in the hay, wear your hoodie if you have to, you know, do what you got to do, <laughs> self-preservation. But like, you know you. You know you, guy, gal, you know who you are. Folks. <laughs> yeah, I, I love saying folks. That's my that's my trademark. Yeah, it's 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 not it's not it's not gender. There's no gender it's sign. Not gender. It's respectful. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? It's like folks. How are you, folks? Because they're folks. They don't know they're folks until they get called folks, and it's like, oh, yeah. whoa, we're folks. There's, there's no sir, ma'am, ladies, no. gentlemen. It's absolutely folks. A, uh, it's just an umbrella that covers yeah. the individuals who are paying attention to the words I I'm saying. It's, I think it's more endearing than audience. <laughs> okay, audience. Who's <laughs> 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 <What? laughs> this guy? <laughs> Thank you for being an audience. Hello, audience. <laughs> I'm going to open a set like that. Hello, audience. <laughs> I'm going to try that. I'm going to write that down. So I want to I want to make sure I say to you, I make sure I say to you on the record, especially how important I think it is. And I love, I love the resources that connect everything to everybody. So the fact that like we, we probably have – like some mutual friends. We probably know some mutual people, but like, we don't know that we know these things. We Absolutely. don't know that we yeah. have all the same. We have a, we have similar friends in common, but now you and I are friends. Yeah. I, I, I'm looking forward to this being just the very beginning of what our journey is as friends. And, and if at any point you want to like ever workshop some jokes, if you ever want to have Absolutely, a, man. if you ever want to have a creative endeavor if you ever want to like just chat if you just need a friend if you just need some judgment free conversation if you like feel overwhelmed if you're full and you you got it you got to just you got to just spew it all out I'll, <laughs> I'll be here I'll hear I'll be here with the bucket dude I'm, what a guy I'm, I'm telling you hell yeah so that that's an open invite that I don't want to say I don't want to take away from the importance of me saying that to you, but I want to say, if this is your first time listening to the podcast to Evolving with Corey Castle, anybody who's listening to it, uh, my door is open. I'm not a hard to get. I'm not a hard person to get a hold of. If you reach out to me, don't ever feel like you're bothering me. You're not alone. You can have a friend in me, and uh, you're never going to receive any judgment from me, unless like you request it. <laughs> <laughs> what a guy, huh, folks? Also, I want to make sure I say, if this is your first time listening to the show, make sure you hit subscribe. Make sure you follow it. Get new episodes. If you're if you're on Spotify or on Apple Podcasts, you'll get new episodes every Monday at noon. If you're on YouTube, you'll get them as soon as they pop up. Hit that subscribe button. Make sure you comment because I got to like, you know, I like to know you exist. It says that there's views there. Well, let me know that you're a person who viewed it. And what Absolutely. you thought of it? That's all. That's all really important as far as like give, making me feel like I'm not doing this for nothing. Because <laughs> I'm pouring tons of love and passion. My only call to action for you listeners, or which I'm calling you in my head, and I've said it just a few times. My pukes, <laughs> <laughs> my pukes, my <laughs> people evolving with Corey Castle. Oh, pukes, I love it. That's good. That's great. I call my fans my fans. I call my fans headheads. Uh huh. That's great. <laughs> it's perfect. Pretty disingenuous, but <laughs> I say it. I say it on time. Hey, hey, headheads! If this is your first time checking out Corey Castle, yeah, go ahead and follow me on Instagram and Twitter. Absolutely. Uh, go go ahead and you know go ahead and thank thank Jake for his 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 sharing with me here today because this is amazing i'm 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 really i'm really pumped up about the 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 friendship that i've made with you here today and i can't wait till we do it again i love Absolutely. doing i love doing follow-ups if there's ever any thing that you think could help me in any way if you think there's anything you could use my help with in any sure. way please don't hesitate to ask me absolutely man thanks for having me <laughs> is there anything else 
that you'd like to say? Uh, if you are interested in my comedy, uh, my album's a great place to start. It's called Mild Cat. You can get it uh, Spotify, uh, Bandcamp, I don't know, Apple, Apple, whatever you, whatever you're on, it's on there. <laughs> awesome. Well, everybody listening, and you, Jake. Tell everybody that you love that you love them. Be kinder to yourself. Be fun. Have safe. Keep evolving. Woo!